Well, good morning again. I'm Dr. Bill White, and I'm a general dentist that's done nothing but orthodontics and temporal mandibular joint work for the last 45 years or so. And, and uh, I'm pushing to try to get every dentist to learn more about orthodontics. I think you can do a better job as a dentist regardless of what branch of dentistry you're in and uh, the American Orthodontic Society is set up to train dentists any kind of dentist. It doesn't matter whether you're a prosthodontist or endodontist or whatever. If you want to know some orthodontics you can join the American Orthodontic Society. We have an excellent teaching facility and uh, some wonderful guys teaching in the uh, American Orthodontic Society or the AOS. We have board certification, uh, annual meetings. We have study clubs. We're trying to get up more and more study clubs around over the United States and Mexico and Canada and different parts of the world and uh, where we can teach dentists more orthodontics and you can do a much better job being a dentist if you know some orthodontics and it doesn't hurt you how much you you know of it anyway uh, I'll uh, hush up on that <laughs> part of it but I really am trying to get dentistry all over the world to learn orthodontics and uh, this is what this program is about. Now this gentleman that uh, I have here is a bad bruxer and he has a very deep bite and it pushes his jaw backwards and he has a severe TMJ problem and he's got several other problems as you will see. And this is a most interesting case so I hope you will go through it if you're a dentist and want to learn some stuff then uh, do that now if you're just thumbing through the catalog uh, you won't uh, sit through it but it's a going to be a good case and I'm gonna um, start showing you this gentleman uh, he's a very nice fella I would like to give you his name, but uh, they kind of frown on that. And uh, but I'll tell you, he ran the uh, computers for the American Orthodontic. I mean the <laughs> American Airlines, and he has a lot of stress on him, and that adds to your TMJ stuff that you need to know about. And he was in real pain with that. And we were able to relieve that pain and straighten his teeth up and do all this good stuff, which I'm going to show you. Now, it's, this is not a beginner type case. This is a, a difficult case, but you need to learn all of this. And if I can do it, you can do it also. So uh, here is his model. Uh, now, he, we put these models out in 19... Uh, 2090 uh, well in 1992 actually that's February of 92 so it's been a long time since that now he's got this bicuspid completely crowded out around here and this cuspid which is out in this area really needs to be back here if it's class 1 and when we finish up with this this cuspid will be back here these teeth will be raised up right here and these will be taken down and he'll be lined up and his TMJ problem goes away when you get it. His jaw is locked back here and that pushes the condyle uh, where you've got the condyle up in this area. Right now it's being shoved back in here where it's crowding out that retrodiscal 
area and we're going to try to get this where his condyle is is further out the front and he, it frees this up and he, and that helped enough even though he was under the stress of running the computers for the American Airlines which handled the the this, all the it's this ungodly amount of, of computer work to take care of it I don't know so anyway now let's let's look at the uh, other side of the mouth is the same blooming way in other words this cuspid needs to fit here this bicuspid needs to go here this one here and this this uh, bottom jaw needs to be this molar here needs to be out in front of that deal there and back here we've got a wisdom tooth that um, I guess he's lost one up here right there I can't remember now we didn't start this case till 1993 uh, March the 11th of 93 we started the case and he was in so much TMJ brawler that he came in for that reason not to get, get his teeth looking better uh, now let's see if we look at it from the front this is a terrible deep bite and some very sorry crowns on the front part of his mouth made out of porcelain and that's like a wet rock porcelain will grind your teeth off and you'll be astonished when you see what his front teeth look like now this is a case I like to find cases like this I just love to, to take a case like this and solve the person's problem now these crowns are they're sorry now he got some new crowns up here after we finish but we're going to go through this whole doggone case with these sorry crowns that have this porcelain all the way down and they just ground his front teeth off you will be astonished what they've done to his teeth now there are his this is a bad picture but I'll show you a lot more these lower anterior teeth that you've got are completely ground off on the front if you took the tooth up here something like this these teeth are ground off like that I mean this is just a knife edge on those teeth and we had nothing to attach to right out here on front of the teeth this part is gone so we had to put a band we band the teeth with lower anterior bands and and put the brackets on the bands and we fill the anterior part of this with either the cement that would bond them to the teeth or we put acrylic in there and kind of built the thing up over that a little bit uh, so that we could get a hold of the teeth now you look at this and you say oh my god it's so crowded there's no way but I'll tell you when you put these teeth down where they need to go they're going to move forward and it's going to open space in here and this tooth will have plenty of room to go into and now he got some better crowns too he I don't know where he got some of these crowns but he he's going to get some better crowns uh, further on down in the treatment so this is a model that was taken in 92 but he didn't start this to 93 that's a pretty sorry 93 there but anyway Maybe you'll understand that. All right. Now, there's a better look at those teeth. There, but when you look at them in his mouth, this is literally ground off down to the gum line down here on all these teeth across the front of his mouth. And that deep bite forced his jaw back, and the forcing it back crowded the condyle was pushing in on the retrodiscal tissue that's where the blood vessels 
and the nerves and everything are in the joint that's where the synovial fluids made and he, he was having real problems with that now when we moved all this forward he stopped having problems and he even was so good he he sent me a patient out of the ladies that worked in his computer area there was having a problem too she he sent her over to have her teeth worked on she was having a similar problem okay now here are pictures of his teeth this is two uh, eight ninety three and we still haven't done anything but he's having so much tmj pain he's having a difficult time doing his work now this is a deep <laughs> this is a deep bite <laughs> and you don't even see his lower anterior teeth so we're going to have to pick these up and we're going to have to go down with these and we're going to have to open this bite up and that's what uh and when you open it up the jaw will just come forward now we may use uh, we may come in here with some class 2 elastics back here and pull this forward a little bit but when you free a jaw up like this the lower jaw will move forward in nearly every case that you get like that now I had one one time that actually went from a class 2 position to a class 3 and I had to put some class 3 elastics on it to get it back to class 1 so anyway if you don't realize that uh, <coughs> you you need to if you free them deep bite up the jaw on nearly anybody is going to have a tendency to move forward it's free now it can move forward some of his grinding of those teeth may have been the jaw trying to come forward and it was rubbing up here and just ground itself off on the back of these uh, porcelain crowns that he's got in the front part of his mouth. Now you can see where this cuspid is meeting right behind the lateral, it needs to go back behind over here. And all these teeth need to go back a whole tooth to get the class one relation. You can see it. Now in his mouth you can see this porcelain right here and it's actually wore the porcelain down. Now that if that had been solid gold back here up to where the teeth didn't touch, the teeth wouldn't have worn near as much. But anyway the porcelain was down there and that ground those teeth off. Just rubbing back and forth on that constantly. Uh, ground those teeth off. Now look at the teeth. I have never seen anybody with their teeth literally ground off and even the tops of the teeth, the teeth were a lot higher than this so the grinding has gone down on the teeth. But man he's got a an edge on those teeth. He could bite something and really bite it you know but his front teeth had just ground this off where his uh, front teeth were down here somewhere like that now we're going to have to intrude these and I'm going to have to figure out a way to get a hold of these and we're going to bracket all these teeth so we put bands the only thing I could come up with would be to put a metal band around that tooth that stuck out in front of the tooth here and we filled it with either acrylic and hardened it and had it come out above the band you'll see it here in a minute and we could take an arch wire and come across here and attach to these teeth and then we'll put pressure on them with an intruding arch and we'll open the bite and if you haven't learned how to use that intruding arch that is one of the best things. It'll speed up your treatment time by a couple of three months, really. You can level a bite out with that second auxiliary wire, the intruding wire that 
it comes way down like this and you raise it up and hook on just those teeth you want to lower and you can open a bite with that before you can even get the darn arch wire to where you can get a strong enough arch wire to do that and these little arch wires that do like that they push the motors down and buy customers up to get this to go down and that's not near as efficient as that one wire coming off the six year motor back here that goes down you raise it up hook it to the teeth and then you have a regular arch wire that's going in here just a, a flexible wire that you can engage and be rotating the teeth and lining them up and everything does a whole lot of things that's about seven or eight things that it might do and then the intruding wire brings those teeth down and you can put torque in it you can torque these roots out if you want to normally when you go down with them the tooth is going to tilt forward and the root will be further back than it is to start with if you really go real far and don't put that reverse torque in it uh, now this stuff is is hard orthodontics and you gotta you're not gonna learn this in a few weekends people think we're teaching people to do orthodontics in a two or three weekends that's a bunch of bull uh, it takes a good long time and it takes somebody that can think about it and how to do it to get it done okay here we jumped ahead a lot but you see we got an intruding wire up above and it's attached to these four teeth you see it coming along here it's not attached it's attached to these four teeth and this is your conventional arch wire in here now as this one picks these teeth up it has a tendency to make if this force is going up you'll have an equal force going down back here in the back of the mouth now if the person chews good on that the six-year molar thing that it's attached to won't move hardly any uh, you can see that on where we had this intruding wire was born just look on that video and it'll show you that now let me get that cleared up and we're doing that on the, the bottom too now at the same time we've got some spring in here we're opening this gap and these teeth are moving forward as they go down now those are bands around those teeth we just had a lot of old bands left over we had those and we brought those down this is seven of 93 and we had this guy finish the orthodontics in two years maybe a little bit more than two years and you'd have never done it without these intruding arch wires so if you want to really learn how to speed up orthodontics good orthodontics then you need to learn how to use these and we use triple tubes back here and double tubes on the bottom and that's a headgear but we run our regular deal through a, through a thing here and then we run the uh, intruding arch off of the second tube same thing up above the intruding wires in a separate slot through here and it goes way up like that and it's brought down and hooked on the teeth that you want to go up now I'm spending a lot of time doing uh, this talking to you about this stuff but there's so many people that do not understand how to really straighten teeth and I don't give a darn you can go to orthodontic school and come out and still not know how to do some of this stuff at least you spent two or three years trying to but there's some of this stuff you just can't be taught in a two or three year period because you don't take time enough to treat cases that are three or four years long and coming out but you can see where we put this intruding wire in this upper slot 
Now this one is round. I like really to use rectangular ones, but this one will work. And it went way on up like that. We bring it down tight to these. So it's picking these teeth up. This one, I think, is round too. I'd rather have rectangular ones. Now it is stuck in the second tube down here, and our regular arch wire is in the, the tube for it. And it's going right along here. And it, this intruding wire, though, is went way down here, and you raise it up. And I can open a bite on somebody, the deepest bite you can find, before you can even get an arch wire that will actually fit into the brackets that has strength enough to force the teeth down with that one arch wire. And now that is the truth, and you can try it, so you need to learn how to use that intruding arch wire. And here we've got a spring that went in this thing that's opening this gap in here because as these teeth go down, we're pushing them forward also. And they're going down. These teeth are going up and going out. And we'll have gaps in them. We'll show you that in a little bit, a little better picture on that. All right. <coughs> We also, in order to get this to be able to start the day one, we put we put all this mess in there on day one. Now we had to put a bite plate up in this part to open the bite, see, to keep that open. Because we couldn't even take those bands with the brackets on with the teeth like they were. And so we have a guy with a TMJ problem, so we're having to be very cautious with this. But we, excuse me, I'm going to, uh, to, we had to have some kind of a bite plate here so we could put all this stuff on day one. So we can actually put everything you see on here in, in day one. And I'll get the bite open before you can even think of it if you're just using one arch wire. So this speeds up the work. Now, here it is 12 of 93. And we have these teeth that were here, were down here. Now these are down. And you can see those little brackets we've got on them. And look what's happened here. The cuspid now is falling in the spot where it should. It was way out here. Now it's back here. The bicuspid's here. here. The lower motor's out in front. The darn thing is nearly class one now, and we've had it on uh, how many months? I, I didn't see it was uh, January, February, or March, or somewhere in there, and now it's still 93. Uh, but it's darn near 94, and we've got this bite wide open. Man. And his TMJ problem has gone away. He does not have it. His jaw moved forward. The condyle moved forward. It got off of the retrodiscal tissue. The blood vessels can carry on back there and make synovial fluid like they should. The jaw is functioning more normal and his TMJ problem has gone. Now, most dentists don't have any, I mean, there are people doing orthodontics don't have the foggiest idea of how to take care of the joint while they're doing the darn orthodontics or whatever you're doing. Putting a crown on somebody, you can cause it to shove the jaw back. I did that one time, or somebody, one of my uh, referring dentists did, and uh, it caused a TMJ problem. Just putting a crown with a thick back on it caused the, this person to get a joint problem. Now, you see this lower molar? See how far it is out in front? Now this bicuspid is coming down in that one here, and here the cuspid is there in class one. 
Now, you're not going to see this stuff unless you know a lot of orthodontics. And I don't give a darn how many of these uh, views that come in here. I want to help anybody anywhere in this world do orthodontics if we can. And uh, every dentist, I don't give a darn what you think about it, but every dentist ought to know something about orthodontics. What can be done orthodontically? You need to understand that. Now, I, he is pretty well lined up now. So the, the dentist that referred him in, now just a little bit from now, he's going to crown these front teeth. All right, let's go here. Now you can see this thing, he's kind of worn it out. But now we've got it where you don't really need this. We've got him open so you can do away with this thing. Get it out of there, you see. And now let's, let's go look at, all right. His dentist crowned all of these teeth down on the front. And you remember when we started, you couldn't even see these teeth. Now this is leveled out. This is finished. And this has got to have been deepened. And this went up right here. And it was caused by these parts. This is still 93. I can't read that date on that very good. Uh, now that's all happened in a short period of time. Now that's, oh, that's 95 down here instead of 93. All right, it's definitely 95 here. Now, these teeth that were nothing, they were ground off to the, he's put gold crowns and put porcelain fronts on these gold crowns, and his TMJ problem has totally gone away. And now this man can do his work. He can take the stress that is good on him because the jaw function is better. So many times you have somebody that's under tremendous stress. It's got joint problems, and they also have a functional problem in their teeth. So you can correct that deal, and then their body is able to cope with the stress that it's under. So I've found that in many times we have taken every joint case that we had and we made it better. And you can do that, but you've got to talk to people. You've got to find out really what's the reason for it. And I don't know of a single case you can go back to where I worked the last 12 years and ask them. Uh, we got people out of pain. You can't correct all the pops and uh, you can't restore the disc. But uh, Dr. Larry Wolford, good friend of mine, an old surgeon, does he, he goes back in on everybody he operates on that has a disc off, I call it a disc, it's a strap across there. He puts a pin in the back of the condyle with a couple of sutures on it and goes up and pulls the darn uh, strap back over the head of the condyle. He puts a pin in here and it's got sutures on it. This is Dr. Larry Wolford in Dallas. He's, uh, he's done some cases for me and I've known him for years. And he pulls this strap back and puts it up. And these cases that he puts the strap back on there hold up so much better. And he has so much, so less trouble with these cases if he leaves the, the disc, if you want to call it that, out in front. He doesn't have near the success with his surgery. So he goes in and does that. And if you want to know more about it, get a hold of Dr. Larry Wolford or go hear him speak. 
he speaks all over the world and uh, he is a fine guy and he he charges for his uh, work though and it's it's but it's good so and, and, and you get over it now here's this guy these teeth now are leaning a lot further forward they'll kind of get some of that straightened up and after uh, now this is 96 of 95 and we're uh, virtually through with the case he goes back later and uh, has these crowns replaced up here they need to be replaced but this is porcelain here meeting porcelain and it's not going to wear out quick and so this guy has gotten over his TMJ problem he's got a nice looking set of teeth that he can eat with and chew with and look how level this bite is and we had that thing leveled in a, several months with these intruding arch wires and I hope you will learn how to use those living things because they get you through some tough orthodontic cases and uh, let me go on I think we've got a lot of slides I'm going to show you later down the line we brought that out to where the crowding back here we just did away with it so when he does replace these crowns he may crown the rest of this part and fix that up this is now in a retainer this is not the bite open that we had but the retainer that we have has a bite plate on it there are no wires going across these teeth don't do that just make a total wraparound retainer here we show you how to make it and it will stay in the mouth don't think you've got to have these darn clips going across the teeth that is not any good especially these deals where you go up and have this through and then you run your wire around like that get away from that teeth need to run into teeth and these little old plastic shells they put on are terrible but I mean they keep them straight but when you put that stupid thing in it's just as thick back here as it is up here and you're biting down on it thicker about here so that it tends to intrude your molar teeth while you're wearing it and your teeth never come up against their teeth you've got to have the teeth free to erupt into each other and they wear into each other just like a set of valves in a motor have to wear in to where it really fits good and they do not do that with this dead gum retainers that people are using now just because they're cheap and easy to make you can make a wraparound retainer and do it right and the patient will wear the darn thing and they can keep it if necessary the rest of their life I have people come in the office I've seen for 30 years and their teeth are still straight and that doesn't happen people come in all the time the parents with say, well I didn't wear my retainer the darn retainer you were given had you teeth going one way when they put it in there you're biting on these wires and when you take it out they go another way and it's back and forth back and forth and uh, that is no good you need to put the darn retainer in and your teeth come together and meet like that and it's best to have a bite plate on them to keep them from deepening now if we could go in with these anterior bonded stuff up here that met the teeth and the retainer would just have to keep the teeth aligned up on the side out here that would be the uh, it'd be better really if we bonded on the back of the teeth and they had a little shelf like those that shelf on those crowns we made and it'll be there 
forever. Okay, I'm not fussing at you, but somebody needs to fuss at somebody because the sorry stuff. Now, a lot of people make beautiful, they get the teeth lined up beautiful, and then retain them sorry. You don't want anything crossing over underneath there. So I'm going to stick with that. Now this guy's jaw came out and this went back here. I don't have to hold it where I didn't see where we even had a class to elastic on it, but I, we must have had some class to elastic on the guy. He's a great fella. And, but his teeth now are lined up in a class one. His jaw comes out here, and his jaw would open and close when he's relaxed, and it'll open and close in this position. So we have the jaw meeting like it likes to, and the teeth hitting like they like to. And you don't have much TMJ problem when you get to that point. Now, this... Uh, you don't want to try to close this space by bringing these teeth back. If you do, you're going to crowd the lower. You can. So if you want to get rid of that space, you either have to build this tooth up or this tooth and close it in there. And there's a lot here. You could crown this and uh, fill that up. But you want to keep these teeth out in this position right here. So when he had these teeth crowned, he may have done something there. Okay, my silly dogs are having a fit. Here he is in 1998, and that's where his teeth are. I end, end up with this video. I'm at home, and my dogs are carrying on over something out here. So I'm going to push this over on pause. Okay, I have trouble getting things messed up when I'm trying to make these videos. Now these are the sorest crowns up here that I don't know if it looks like somebody pushed the thumb in them. Uh, he has those done better. But now when we open this up, these bicuspids come right into that space right here. And we had plenty of room for all of his teeth. Let me see. Now there's the way those teeth were. That's the mechanics of bringing it in. We had it open. And uh, we started in 93. And in 793, we had the darn bite open. There's what we used to open them. Those put bands around those teeth and we ground off to nothing up here. Now watch this when it goes down. These teeth move right out in that space. There's the intruding wire. It's attached to them. An intruding wire up there. And here's 12 of 93. We got the darn bite open like mad. Oh, challenge you if you can do that with one arch wire I'd eat it and you cannot and you can speed your orthodontic treatment up by two to three months really if you will learn how to use the doggone intruding arch wires and it's not that difficult to learn and the stuff is in these videos that you can learn it on. Now there we leveled it all out in 93. And here he is. They got the crowns in there in 95. And some of this is just repeating itself. And here's 95. We're, th we're through with the man. See, we've got it. we solved the problems. Now I think I've got some stuff here in 90. And that's, uh, I put a lower arch wire. There's the case. There it is. This is where it started. And there was where it finished. There's where it was. And that was 92. 
and this is 98, but this is a long time after we finished in 95, 93, and 98, but we had it finished in 95. Now, let's start. There it is. And orthodontics is one of the most gratifying things you can do. It was it is so meaningful to me to take a man that has a real responsible job of running the computers for American Airlines that does all these uh, I don't know how in the world they make all these tickets and have everything for everybody going all over the world and it would worry the life out of you. Now, I think he got these other crowns. Now, there's the retainer in this mouth, you see. And here he is. No TMJ problem. His teeth meet together. They look good. They eat good. And you are able to do this with a little glue and a few wires and a few bands wrapped around teeth. And you have really made this guy's life. Now, orthodontics to me is the most wonderful thing you can make a living at. And if you're a general dentist, you know you can do it. And if you want to do it, come to the American Orthodontic Society and we'll teach you to do it. Uh, but it's not going to be overnight. And you're not going to just learn it like so simple. It is difficult. And I'm going to close out there. And uh, uh, I'm going to close this down and finish this video. And I hope to God some of you learn something from this and make it worth your while to listen to and study this thing. So I'm going to hush up now and stop.